So I thought I'd do another quick video on how to uh, really use these uh, trig values to use inverse functions. So we'll look at um, example number four. This is from section 3.3, finding a number given its circular function. So this is what we were doing the other day in class, but I wanted to have a place where you could go back and look at it. So we're going to find the approximate value of s if the cosine of s is this value, but on this interval from 0 to pi halves. Now this 0 to pi halves is the first quadrant, so this one's not so bad because we know that we, if we have the right angle, if we have the quadrants, if we have our put that back, if we have our x and y axis, um, we we remember what where everything is. So we have zero pi halves and pi and three pi halves. And as we have all of those, then we're able to tell which quadrant we're in from 0 to pi halves here. You should also remember what these values are, that they're just numbers. So we're looking for the inverse sign. So uh, we just need to take the cosine, negative 1, of the cosine of s. That'll give us s. And we do to one side, we do to the other side. So we take the cosine, negative 1, or the inverse cosine of 0 0.9685. Plug that into your calculator, and you get, i use a cheap little calculator here, if we want to take and plug in 0 0.9688, 0 0.9685, and make sure we're in radians, and we're going to take the inverse cosine and it tells us it's 0 0.2561 and if we look that value can be rounded um, but that's the specified value that's that's the answer that's our value about a quarter so we have the answer if the directions were clear, it would have to tell us where to approximate. We don't know exactly where, so we could just write that the approximation is 0 0.2520, 0 0.252. Just rounding it, we should probably make this approximately 2.52. Let's do another one. The exact value of the specified. So here we go again. Now we're on from 0 to 3 pi halves. I need that from 0 to 3 pi halves. That's a pretty big area. If we remember here, we're from here all the way over to here. And the tangent of s equals 1. So now, we might have to think about this. There may be more than one answer to this question. So let's take a look. Let's remember, what is the tangent of s? So the tangent, remember, is the cosine It's the sine divided by the cosine. We have y tangent of s equals the cosine of the sine of s divided by the cosine of s. And the real way I remember that is where we're always comma sine comma sine, which is reversed to x comma y. And tangent is like slope, which is y over x sine over cosine. We can remember all that. Go ahead and we have to think here now. We could do this with a calculator. We want to know where all this equals one. So we want to know where they're the same. Well, we know that they're same at all multiples here of pi fourths. Pi fourths. So there's one there, there's one over here, but that one's not going to be positive. So we want a positive one. And, and I'll leave it to you to think why is. This, this is 1 pi force, 5 force, 3 pi force. Why is 3 pi force not 1, but 4? 5 pi force will work. 5 pi force. So we'll go ahead and look here. So mathematically, we can take the inverse tangent of s, of the tangent of s. 
the tangent of s tangent of s that's going to take the inverse 10 of 1 and it should give us approximately the answer of whatever pi divided by 4 is. So we can check both of that make sure we're on the right path here. So we're going to take the inverse we'll clear this we have 1 we want the inverse inverse uh, so we want 1 inverse tangent and that tells us it's 0 0.782 to 8 that's the decimal approximation they wanted an exact value so we're gonna there's our approximation so we want to know is that the same as pi force so we can test that out by looking at what is pi pi divided by 4 and as you see on the screen they're the exact same thing so this truly is pi force we can also try 5 pi force and see if the tangent of that so let's take 5 times pi divided by 4 and then take the tangent and that should be 1 so we know that the answers could be multiple in this range. So we have the exact answer is either pi force I I wrote that. is equal to pi force or pi And again, because we're all the way over to this, we have the two answers. If this was, if this was 0 to pi halves, it would be this one. If it was uh, pi to 3 pi halves, it would be this one for both of them if it's in that interval. So we have the answers. hope that's been educational and you understand this now. We have both the exact answers we've found, and we looked at how we do approximate answers. The trick is to remember which quadrant you're in and using reference angles. So. Um, we'll leave it there.